In this episode, I want to talk about the validation code as promised in the last episode. And if you look at the operation, our actual code to validate the incoming data is in the validate for create method. And what we do there is we really just test if the title and the body key in the hash that the user passes into the operation um, are present. So they, they basically have to be any kind of value, like a string or an integer or whatever. And it's important to understand that this is really just a pure Ruby validation. So we, we are actually manually writing this validation. And I'm going to show you how to use a great gem called dry validation today. Dry validation is from the dry RB project, which is a group of developers, fantastic developers around the world writing small, very versatile gems to be used in basically any kind of Ruby application. And dry validation, as you might have guessed from the name, brings you a very sleek and simple DSL to write validations. And those validations range from very formal, simple things like this has to be a string up to very complex rules that can actually run custom Ruby code in order to check for a certain format of a field or several fields. And the first action today is to add the wonderful dry validation gem to our gem file. And once this gem is part of our bundle, I'm going to jump back to the operation and I'm going to add our first dry validation in this project. And this is just a class. And this class is simply derived from dry validation contract. So it's a subclass of dry validation contract. And in this contract, in order to define the rules and the fields, we need to use params do. And don't ask me why we have to do this. I just do it because the docs say so. And then in this block, we can start adding rules. For example, what we had was um, required title dot filled. So that basically means the title field has to be filled. And we do the same for body. And now here's the thing, like we could be actually using a separate file for this class, but when you have an operation, it's usually a good idea to start the operations contract in inline in the same file, because otherwise you have two files and that would probably sit in the contract directory. But I really prefer having those smaller validations inline in the operation. The interesting part here is that we're really just creating a class called validation. Let's call it validations in the create operation. So if I jump to my Rails con console, I can really access this class using the path of constants, like blog post operation create validation. So that is actually there and it's a class. So it's, there's no like magic or anything happening. And this is really just namespacing. So we actually could be using the validation right here. So I could instantiate and then I could call this validation that this is the actual API you have to use. And what it returns is an errors object or a result object. But let's do that in the operation. So instead of having our manual check right here, I'm going to replace that with the code we just tested in the console. And I'm going to grab the result object as the return value. But I'm basically just instantiating the validations class and then I'm calling it, and that's the public API that is defined by dry validation, and passing in the myparams hash. And that gives me the result object. And since I want to know the errors, if there were any errors on the outside, I'm going to assign the errors object of the result object, and that's, again, the API of dry validation. And I'm going to assign that result object or the errors object to a context variable called errors. So it's pretty sim similar to what we had earlier. And as a last step, I'm going to use another public me method of the um, result object, and that is result.success. So I'm going to return a Boolean value because this is the last statement in this method. And by returning either true, meaning the validation was cool, or false, meaning the validation had violations, the operation knows about the outcome of the validation and will take care of the control flow. And that is basically Trailblazer in a nutshell. So you have the operation for control flow. And in those steps, you delegate to other objects that take care of a very particular part of your application. In this case, it's a validation. Okay, and before running our test suite, we can safely remove the add errors code. So I'm removing the step and I'm removing the method because we now use the errors object from dry validation. And when running our tests, there are a bunch of problems, I guess. Yeah, and that's because we, we wrote tests against an errors object that looks different. 
So in order to fix that, what I do is I, first of all, I remove the manual errors object that we passed into the operation. We don't need that currently. I'm gonna show how to use an errors object in another episode. And then what we should do is we should call to h to hash on the errors object because that's another dry validation API call to make the errors object readable. And then when I run the test again, those errors look much more understandable. So this one is already passing. This one still needs a 2h. And this test case simply fails because the error message now looks different. So I'm gonna replace the old assertion with the beautiful error message from dry validation. Rerunning the test and everything passes. Using dry validation inside an operation is very, very popular and it's very, very frequently used. It's so frequently used that we have a gem with a shortcut in it. And that's the Trailblazer macro contract gem that you need to add to your gem file. And this gem allows us to use a macro, a macro that basically replaces the validate for create step, the one that is calling the validation manually with generic code provided by a library. So all I do is I say contract validate and then I hand in the constant validations.new. So this call, this method call, this macro basically returns a step created by Trailblazer that is gonna run the validations contract. The beauty here is that we can delete this code. And since extracting the actual data you wanna validate from the params hash is so common as well, the macro brings you the key option. So what I do is I just tell the macro, please extract the actual data that we wanna validate from blog post in the params hash. So that means we can delete this method and this step. And since we don't have a my params anymore, we should read the data for the persisting from the result object. And that you can do by accessing result.contract.default. That's the result object after this validation has been run. And by saying 2h, you basically get the validated data in a beautiful hash that is perfectly fitted to be passed directly into the active record new. And since the result object is now stored in result.contract.default, we have to adjust our test a little bit. So instead of errors, I'm gonna use the result object dot errors. Yeah, we don't want the errors right here. And I'm running the test and everything passes. And look at the trace. You can see there's some magic going on from that macro, but I'm gonna explain that in a separate episode.